An early warning and response system follows the basic principle of allocating limited resources according to risk. The following demo is purely written in JavaScript and HTML files and is not connected uh, to a database server or a great geographic information server. The risk and resource maps are created randomly and uh, they just show a proof of concept how the risk maps and resource maps can be used. Browsers can use the GPS sensor from a smartphone so these random risk and resource maps can be used offline without internet connectivity. The colors from red uh, to over yellow to green show hotspots of risk, um, medium risk and no risk. The risk layer with the colors is overlaying uh, a real map here uh, an example from Trivandrum uh, in India. The risk can be determined by temperature, humidity or the epidemiological relevant garbage in the environment. All these factors um, aggregate a risk value between 1 and 0. 0 is no risk and 1 is a high risk. So this will be uh, allow us to evaluate risk layers by fuzzy logic methodology. <clears throat> On the other hand, we have a resource layer. Um, the green spots indicate where we have good availability of resources. The red areas can be um, areas where no resources are available. Resources for in an epidemiological setting can be um, material for fogging, larvae sites, or even social workers that help uh, risk mitigation and uh, risk awareness. If we compare uh, risk and resources, we have again this random risk map on the left side with low risk and high risk indicators and uh, the resource map with uh, high availability of resources, the green dots and low availability of resources, the red areas. And the comparison of both show where the resources cover the risk and the red areas indicate spots where the resources cannot cover the risk. An optimization strategy uh, will reallocate the resources according to risk so that these areas of red spots in the comparison map will be reduced or completely vanished from the map so that uh, at least the map is uh, most of the areas are green and the red spots with high danger for the population will be reduced at least to a red area or a slightly green, yellow-green area. If we think about smartphone users that are exposed to risk, they evaluate those maps locally with a different user interface. The GPS tailored warning will only provide warnings in the area where they uh, live and um, they will provide access to resources close to their geolocation. Now we look into the intervention setting of this demo. So we have so the risk before allocation of resources on the left and the risk after allocation of resources on the right. You see a significant reduction of uh, people exposed to risk. For example, before 393,000 people are exposed to dengue risk and after application of, of resources, larvae sites, mosquito nets and so on, we have at least uh, 140,000 people at dengue risk. So there's a risk reduction uh, which is sh shown in the map. These are just random numbers just to explain how it works. Now we're looking at the resources. If we're using resources for risk mitigation, the resources, the availability of resources is reduced. For this example, we had around 400,000 units for fogging and larvae sites, and after that, only 175,000 units for larvae sites are available. The application of resources reduces the availability of them. And furthermore, if we can identify unused resources in some areas, then we can use them maybe in other areas where there's a high need of resources. When you look on the right side here, then you I could identify that there's no difference between the ref and the right side before and after allocation of resources. This indicates that no resources are used. If you compare in the top left corner the resources before and after allocation of resources, you will identify 
that there's a, a huge decline of the availability of resources. This indicates that resources in that area are used for risk mitigation. If we compare the risk maps before and after allocation of resources, we see a significant difference in the top left corner because the hot spots, uh, red spots in the top left corner, nearly vanished. Uh, a yellow areas remain because the risk mitigation can, are not fully, fully accomplished in that area, but at least we see a significant reduction. This risk reduction in the top left corner correlates to the uh, consumption of resources in the top left corner from before and after allocation of resources down here. Um, the risk map is, I don't want to mention this again, is based on random risk maps and resource maps and it shows the basic principles and it assumes that the uh, resources are having an impact on the risk in that area. But in, when you collect data and you use real risk maps and real resource maps, it might be the case that you identify that you allocate resources, but there is no impact on the risk reduction or no significant impact. So if you use real data, real risk maps and resources, then this intervention comparison can also be helpful if the application of resources is really showing an impact on the risk mitigation. And if the application does not show an impact on, on the risk reduction, you might decide to allocate the resources in a different area. Because everything is HTML and JavaScript, it is intended to use offline on a smartphone. So the, when there is internet connectivity, you select a certain area from a map which are where you are working in and the selected map, including this um, HTML JavaScript interface, is downloaded on your smartphone. And then it's uh, possible to use them offline, maybe for example with a vector control unit. The vector control unit um, applies larvae sites or does fogging in certain areas. And this data about this um, application of resources is collected offline on the smartphones. When there is online connectivity again, this application of resources may be combined with a larva account later, um, is stored back on the GIS server, which is incorporated in the resource and risk mapping uh, for further applications. Because application of resources means that there are less resources available and data about larva account in certain water bodies in an area will indicate that previous application of resources reduced the risk for the population in that area. A time series is implemented uh, in that demo so that you can uh, adjust the temperature. 100% means perfect for mosquitoes. 100% humidity means perfect for mosquitoes. 15% means uh, almost not perfect for the mosquitoes. Garbage means that a lot of garbage is available in that area of, as breeding places. So these are example uh, variables that uh, determine the risk and you can adjust them and see how this has an impact on uh, the risk in that area. And uh, step by step you see how the risk evolves. This perfect uh, conditions according to temperature, humidity and garbage will create a risk map with very um, large areas of hotspots if you look down below. If you combine that with real-time uh, temperature and humidity data where the uh, GIS server is populated and uh, the real-time um, or step-by-step -step update of the resources, um, this is an iterative process to allocate the resources step-by-step -step according to risk and use uh, the re available resources that are mostly limited uh, to a perfect or almost optimized way for public health risk mitigation. According to fuzzy logic and linguistic values, we can identify areas of low, medium or high risk. This is uh, realized by color codes in the maps. If we look into the map, you can select green only which means you just get the areas 
of low risk and the other parts of the map are populated with uh, tiles of the uh, real map here of Trivandrum. And if we show the map again, we, we just get the high risk areas, then you just see the hot spots and uh, not the medium and low risk areas. If you combine the risk mapping in the GIS server with an email or communication system of a public health agency, you can decide who will uh, have access to the risk layers and uh, you can, for example, grant access to the administration of the pub public health agency. You can grant access to the public health workers and you can grant access to everyone with GPS map and uh, so that they are aware of the risk in that area. And you can create an early warning system and send risk info uh, when they, a certain area the threshold is exceeded for the risk and you can send tailored to the to user groups for administration, public health workers and people in that area the risk information. If we have a short look, look in the underlying IT structure, you see that the, um, the risk map and the resource map are organized in pixel layers where each pixel has a certain risk value between 0 and 1. 0 means no risk, run, 1 means a high risk. And according to these risk values, the colors are set in the pixels of the map. Um, if you look into the different values, you can edit them by hand and see how the pixels change in the map. If temperature or humidity are detected by remote sensing or ground data, um, for example, the temperature of 25 degrees Celsius seems to be uh, perfect for the breeding situation for mosquitoes. So, in terms with other environmental variables, this are, uh, these conditions are calculated in values between 1 and 0. So every fuzzy layer in the GIS, in the Geographic Information System, can be combined uh, with fuzzy logic operators. For example, if a vector needs humidity and temperature in a perfect way, then the comb combination of these values are represented in a fuzzy end of humidity and temperature. These basic spatial fuzzy layers in a geographic information system are the first step towards a fuzzy controller in a spatial decision support system.